Holla holla, Claudina9 here, and in today's long-awaited video, I'll be ranking every Monster High movie from worst to best based on my opinion. If you want to find out which Monster High movie reminds me of my mom and I, fashion errors and malfunctions the animators didn't want you to notice, and which Monster High monster I have a crush on, keep on watching. Today's video is inspired by the amazing Raven Rye. I've linked Raven's video in the description below to check out later. Number 15, Electrified. This movie is part of Monster High's reboot and follows the ghouls as they help Claudine with her dream of building a salon to bring monsters and normies together. There's so much about Electrified that made no sense to me and felt ridiculously long and slow paced. Claudine is seen designing throughout the movie, so why would they open a salon? If anything, they should open a boutique and sell clothing. Designing and doing hair are entirely different things. I digress, there's several inconsistencies, like Frankie's random ability to transform clothes using electricity and the fact she made a baby out of thin air using electric currents. Obviously, this is a kids movie, but there's plenty of kids movies that don't feel so random and nonsensical. I give this movie 2 scars out of 10. Number 14, Welcome to Monster High. The beginning of the end. <laughs> this movie is about how Monster High was created by Draculaura, her dad, and Frankie with the help of Claudine and her family. That's right, you heard correctly. The entire plot of Monster High as you knew it was changed in this movie. Frankie is no longer the newbie, Cleo and Deuce are no longer dating, Headmistress Bloodgood no longer exists, and get this, Monster High is built out of Draculaura's house. While the animation is beautiful, the storytelling feels dreadfully slow, and I attribute this to a lack of background music. And while the message of being yourself is nice, they don't do a great job at making a powerful message like past Monster High movies. I give this movie 3 scars out of 10. Number 13. Great Scarier Reef. The story follows Laguna Blue as she's whisked away to her hometown and has to face her fear of dancing due to childhood trauma. I wanted to love this movie because I relate a lot to its antagonist. I'll get into that in a bit. But it makes no sense Laguna is afraid to dance seeing as she's seen in dance class and also fear leading. Laguna didn't feel like Laguna in this movie. She was kind of annoying and clueless. Laguna has always been depicted as easygoing as a go-with-the-flow kind of ghoul, and is often seen giving others advice. Growing up, everyone made fun of my mom. Kids were afraid to have sleepovers at my house because they were scared. At school, people puckered their lips to make fun of her deformity. Everywhere we'd go, people pointed her out and treated her like a monster. He's my dad. But the rest of the town... Thought he was evil just because of his looks. Including... Me. They didn't know that he taught me how to roller surf and that he makes an amazing kelp burger. Like Kala and her dad, my mom is a great mom. She's protective of me, she's always supported me in my dreams, and she's relentlessly there for me. So I empathize a lot with Kala. But this movie was still overly juvenile in its writing, making the movie feel lackluster. The movie does kind of redeem itself towards the end, so I will give it 5 scars out of 10. Number 12, Escape from Skull Shores. I'm a little ashamed to admit, I think this movie has the sexiest Monster High Manster. 12 year old me had some interesting thoughts about Andy Beast. Let me know which Monster High Manster or Ghoul you thought was the cutest. <laughs> Anyways, this movie follows Laguna Blue inviting all her friends to the Great Barrier Reef. This was before they called it Great Scarier Reef. But the ghouls got shipwrecked and are rescued by a con man, Farnum, who brings them to Skull Shores instead. I thought this movie was fun and I find myself watching it more for the overall look. I think Skull Shores does a good job at being entertaining and eventful for the 40 minute runtime. And I only rank it lower because I prefer other movies over it. I give it 5 scars out of 10. Number 11, Friday Night Frights. This movie tackles topics like misogyny as the monsters of Monster High try saying ghouls can't play extreme sports. I think the message of this movie is transcendent and truthfully, it's not a bad movie. I just never find myself drawn to it. I attribute this to the fact it was released an entire year after its intended date. But why did the movie get released out of order? It's likely because of negotiation issues between DirecTV and Viacom at the time. I still like the overall premise of the movie, I just wasn't wowed by it. 
I give this movie five stars out of 10. Number 10, Fright On. Fright On really set the standard of what Monster High is about, equality, inclusivity, and diversity. It discusses themes of oppression, racial supremacy, segregation, and prejudice with no subtlety about it. Van Hellscream is a scary allegory for pseudo-altruism and political power as he manipulates everyone by pretending to work in harmonizing monster-human relations. He gets people to like him by being nice and giving them gifts, but secretly he's trying to segregate the two monster species even more. Here are some clips that sum up the social issues they spoke on. Breaking bread together. Remarkable. This would never have been possible in years past, what with all the diseases spread by werewolves. Enjoy. Ew! It's a disease carrier! What? You heard me. This bathroom is now vampires only. Ow! You can't do that! Stay! Stay! I don't have any diseases! <laughs> Hey, what happened to you, little sis? I don't want to talk about it. Did somebody start something with you? Need me to finish it? I'm so embarrassed! It's not your fault. Vampires have been doing that stuff to our people for thousands of years, and they're gonna keep doing it, unless you fight back. Back your pack! Join We're Pride! Hey, sis, wanna join We're Pride? Back your pack? You should think about joining our cultural group. Vampowerment. Although this movie has its flaws, I think for its time it did a great job discussing serious matters in a way kids can understand. I give this movie six scars out of 10. Number nine, Frights, Camera, Action. <laughs> okay, can we talk about how Frights Camera Action has the best Monster High intro? Frights Camera Action is yet another story revolving Draculaura as she sets out on a mission to find the lost vampire queen who's secretly a Hollywood actress. The movie features a lot of reference to pop culture and celebrities, uses symbolism, and like Fright On, speaks to important issues like supremacy. Your first order of business will be to stop the intermingling of vampires and other monsters. <laughs> he wants me to make vampires rule over all other monsters. Let's be real. Fright's camera action is extremely convoluted. All the clues Elizabeth left conveniently fall into their hands, but it's such a lighthearted, campy movie and doesn't feel as unrealistic as Electrified. I don't take this movie too seriously. I watch this movie when I just want to smile. Sorry guys, he thought it was a souvenir. <laughs> Fun fact, Viperine is a makeup artist and is the first makeup look I ever did myself. For many parts of Fright's camera action, Rebecca's jacket randomly disappears. There's also a scene in which Rochelle Goyle is randomly seen in her Scarus outfit, but then switches back to her basic look. You'll never guess the animation errors in Boo York, Boo York, and this mind-blowing theory on how Astronova knew about Ever After High. If you want to find out, keep on watching. I give this movie six stars out of 10. Number eight, New Ghoul at School. This was the first Monster High movie and basically set the tone for the entirety of Monster High. It's really short and isn't often considered a movie, but much like all the reasons I love Bright's camera action, I love New Ghoul at School for being campy, funny, and entertaining. The movie follows suit of typical early 2000s high school movies. The most popular girl in school is a cheerleader and she's rude to the new girl. It's all very predictable, but it's so fun to watch. Songs like Scars by Allison Iraheta and Friday I'll Be Over You are still on my playlist to this day. It's the perfect way to show someone who doesn't know anything about Monster High what Monster High is about that isn't too long. And it changed my life growing up. So I give this movie six scars out of 10 as well. Number seven, Scaris, City of Frights. Oh, how this movie made 12 year old me so happy. I've always been obsessed with Paris and watching the world of Monster High combined with one of my biggest dreams was a dream. Scaris is a movie about my fave ghoul, Claudine Wolf, as she's chosen to be a designing apprentice to prestigious Garesian designer, Monatella Gostier. It introduces characters like Skeleta Calaveras from Hexaco and Jennifer Long, daughter of the Chinese dragon. Being half Chinese, I also love that they included an explicitly Chinese character into Monster High canon. While this movie is also campy and predictable, it's fun, it doesn't drag on, and the fashion is amazing. Seven scars out of 10. Number six, Freaky Fusion. Freaky Fusion gives us the history of Monster High as the ghouls mistakenly travel back in time to learn about Frankie's scaritage. The movie covers topics like mental health and interracial families, featuring the new Monster High hybrid characters. You mean they're like two different monsters in one? Exactly. 
they each have more than one scaritage. I love that this movie represented all different kinds of families outside of just biological scaritage. Characters like Sparky, who's an orphan, makes his own family. Being both adopted and LGBTQ myself, I know and love many people who have had to make their own families that aren't related by blood. Characters like Rebecca are single parented, and while I only have one minute to sum up the various deep thoughts and realizations I discovered watching this movie, I'll finish by saying you can clearly see the animation budget go up on Freaky Fusion. I thought this movie was so vivid and beautiful. Their introduction to mental health was subtle, but I can see many people relating to characters like Serena Von Boo who get easily distracted and Bonita Femur who feel frequently nervous. We also see Nathan advocate for therapy as he expresses the effectiveness of talking and takes on the role of counselor. It's true. I've spent a lot of time in school counselors' offices just talking through what it's like to be hybrid. I promise, talking really helps. I rate this movie seven scars out of 10. Number five, Ghoul's Rule. Ghoul's Rule is just one of those movies that was made to be a movie. It explores themes of racism, prejudice, and police brutality. Ghoul's Rule continues the story of Fright On by including Van Helstream's niece, Lilith, who is a self-proclaimed monster hunter. She frames Holt Hyde for a crime he didn't commit, and Cleo leads a group of monsters to seek revenge on the normies in a desperate attempt for her family's approval. I just think this movie does a great job at feeling like a movie anyone can enjoy. I loved finally getting to see Cleo Denial's father, Ramses, and the human side of the Monster High universe. I rate this movie 8 scars out of 10. Number 4, Boo York, Boo York, a monsterific musical. Monster High's first musical was anything but disappointing. Cleo finally has a movie that revolves around her, for the most part. All the music is relatively great pop songs, and aside from the monster puns, sound very radio friendly in their nature. My own personal favorite songs are Empire, literally on my current playlist. In one scene, LED is seen in her Comet Gala outfit, but then switches to her City Ghouls outfit. Persephone is also seen roaming the streets of Boo York as a background character by accident. If you ever noticed an error in Monster High movies, let me know down below. While the plot of the movie isn't as deep as movies like Ghouls Rule, the movie is beautifully vibrant and feels exciting every minute of the way. One of the most exciting scenes is the post credits in which Astronova calls Raven Queen and Apple White, informing them Monster High actually exists. Lots of people wonder why and how Astronova knows Raven and Apple of Ever After High. Some theories suggest that Astronova is the iconic fairy tale wishing star or the star in Peter Pan. Boo York features the Ptolemy family, which is named after Greek astronomer Ptolemy, who claimed the gods caused shooting stars. In many legends, it's believed wishing on a shooting star makes a wish come true. In Monster High's Boo York, they say any promise made under the Comet Crystal will come true. Aside from Astronova having star elements in her makeup and outfit, her song is literally called Shooting Star. Let me know below, do you think this theory is true? To me, it's the only one that makes sense. I rate this movie 8 out of 10. Number 3, Haunted. This nearly entire pastel movie is visually captivating and dare I say, breathtaking. <laughs> it's the first movie that surrounds Spectra Vondergeist, and I thought this movie had an impactful message that isn't conveyed enough in children's movies or any movie. The story follows Spectra and ghoul friends in the ghost world, where they're forced to attend Haunted High. While the story feels a tad convoluted in that it's highly illegal for a school principal to keep students captive, I believe this is a metaphor for high school and society in general. Principal Revenant is a deviant herself, but she projects her own pain on to her students, the same way some students have had to endure abuse from teachers in real life, making school feel like a prison. The whole movie is summed up in what I feel is one of the deepest moments in Monster High history. What's happening? Who's doing this? Is it you? Is it your little ghoul friends? Who is doing this to me? You're doing it to yourself. No. Yes. The chains are coming from you. It all makes sense. Look around at your students. All those chains you've given out, and yet you weren't getting any closer to freedom. Because with every haunting, every unjustified detention, every lie, rumor, and bit of gossip you spread, you were creating more chains for yourself. Somebody, somebody else must be doing this. No, deep down, I 
think you knew what you were doing was wrong, and your inner conscience created these chains to try and stop you. You said it yourself. You'll never learn your lesson if you don't pay the price. Taking accountability is a tough topic to tackle, as it's not common in society to take responsibility. So I give this movie 9 out of 10. Number 2. Why do ghouls fall in love? Okay, okay. I know this movie isn't better than a lot of what I've mentioned, and I don't really have valid reasoning, but I just love this movie. There's so many memories I have from when I was a kid and had my first crush. I've watched it about a million times, and something I applaud Monster High for is making their first movie about expectations. This is another mature topic that isn't commonly discussed. The movie is really fun, and Cupid is drop-dead gorgeous. They ask, why do ghouls fall in love? Well, there's no question about whether I love this movie. 9 out of 10. Number 1. 13 Wishes You ever have a movie that you can just quote word for word? When there's a line playing on TV, you just blurt it out like you're in the movie? 13 Wishes is that movie for me. 13 Wishes centers Howleen Wolf and her desire to be popular. Despite being a movie about shadows, it has a lot more depth than be scareful what you wish for. The movie explores the effects of being bullied and living in an older sibling's shadow. As the youngest of six, I can relate to feeling like I'll never measure up to my older siblings. I really get Howleen in this movie, and I love her friendship with Twyla. But for some reason, I'm really drawn to Wisp. I don't love the ending she got, I feel like it was rushed, but she's honestly the only Monster High villain I can relate to and empathize with. The genealogy scene, which shows the Brothers Grimm, feels so magical and epic, and it's interesting to learn these little tidbits and tie-ins to Ever After High. Like Haunted, Freaky Fusion, Fright's Camera Action, and Ghoul's Rule, this movie has a scene that just sticks with me. Only Halloween knows for sure what she saw that day. Maybe she saw sides of herself she didn't even know existed or had forgotten about. Maybe she started to see herself for who she really was, freaky flaws and all. And maybe, for the first time in her life, she genuinely liked who she was looking at. The first few times I saw it, I cried my eyes out. I know that may sound silly, but it really inspired me to have hope that someday I too could love myself, freaky flaws and all. Kate Higgins does an excellent job narrating and making the scenes feel impactful. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Let me know down in the comments, have you seen every Monster High movie? Which is your favorite and how do you rank them? I had so much fun creating today's video and I hope you had fun watching it. Don't forget to click subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Thanks for watching. See ya!